What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over all the new and various balls you're going to be using in Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> Now that the embargo for this game is lifted, and while I don't have a Nintendo-sponsored copy, I managed to get myself an early copy, and everything you're going to be seeing here today falls within the embargo guidelines set by Nintendo before launch, which is going to be tomorrow at, I think, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Basically, Australian release. All the Pokeballs you currently know about are probably not in the game. Everything that was fun before, like fast balls and things like that, those are absent because they were made by Silphco, a man-made company, and now uh, these Pokeballs are also man-made, except you're the man, or woman, or non-binary person who is going to be creating these balls. Great. These are the balls that we are going to be looking at. You're probably familiar with the Pokeball, the Great Ball, and the Ultra Ball, but there's new two new classes of balls. So after you progress your star ranking, you're going to be getting access to the Heavy Ball, a ball that is too heavy to fly far or high, but it is highly effective if you manage to hit an unsuspecting Pokemon. Now, while the exact information on what is unsuspecting is a little vague, I have a pretty good idea on what exactly is being talked about here. So here we are in the beginning area, and you see these Shinx over here. This Shinx, he has the little ellipses, and he kind of sees me, but kind of doesn't. However, in this game, if the Pokemon is facing away from you, you could get, uh, I forgot the exact term, but I think it's called a back shot. However, Shinx is an aggressive, po oh, he's sleeping. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Here's the heavy ball. And as I approach the Pokemon, you're gonna see a little cursor hover over above the Shinx, just like that. If I hold down ZR, which is the throw button, I could choose to hold down ZL, which is to target the Pokemon. You're now going to see that green arrow going up, and you're going to see that it's it's green, which means there's a very good chance I'm going to catch it. However, the Pokeball is not going to reach. If I were to switch to a regular Pokeball, it will reach, but the Heavy Ball is not going to reach. However, as I get closer, if you watch the crosshair in the middle, see how it just expanded? That means I'm now within range that the Heavy Ball is going to work. I like to aim up a little bit. Also, let's go to the left so we can get the back shot to the back of the head. It's the largest part of the Pokemon's model. And I missed. <laughs> they really don't fly far. Okay, let's get even closer. Let's aim all the way up. Got it. Now the Pokemon was unsuspecting. There's a very good chance it's gonna be caught. And it was, great. Now this Shinx over here is kind of looking at me. He's a little suspicious on what's going on. And if I highlight the regular Pokeball, and let's just aim up a little bit, and see how much farther that flies, there's a good reason for that. And we caught Shinx, fantastic. The Great Ball does the exact same thing as the Pokeball, same distance and everything else. However, increased catch rate, Ultra Ball, even better catch rate. The third class of Pokeball is called the Feather Ball. The in-game text reads, a ball that flies fast and true, ideal for catching nimble Pokemon or Pokemon that fly high in the air. Now, I don't know the specific catch rates on the Feather Ball versus the Heavy Ball versus the Pokeball. However, my theory on this, just a game theory, is that the Heavy Ball and the Feather Ball have the exact same base catch rate as the Pokeball. However, if the Pokemon is unsuspecting, it's probably gonna be a little bit more effective. As far as the Feather Ball, I think only flying Pokemon, it's going to have that increased catch rate. But what's really neat about it is there are some Pokemon who are going to notice you much further away than that Shinx can. All right, so there's the Shinx all the way over there. And if I were to go to target it with the Feather Ball, can't even target it yet. However, I can, let's crouch down. By the way, this is the galactic outfit that you get if you have a Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl save data. Again, not allowed to lock onto the Pokemon, right? But if we aim just right, we could boop him right in the face. And this thing flies very far. There's going to be some Pokemon that are much more intimidating, that are very far away, and this is a Pokeball that can cover that distance. So while I think the Heavy Ball provides an increased catch rate for Pokemon that you can get close to, I feel as though the Feather Ball mostly provides more utility. Except for some Pokemon that are flying in the air, 
and there's not a lot of them in the game, but it's impossible to reach them with anything other than the Feather Ball. As far as the progression of the Pokeballs, when you start the game off at a zero star rank, you're going to only have access to the Pokeball. However, after completing the tutorial and catching a small amount of Pokemon thereafter, you're going to be getting access to the Heavy Ball. As you increase your star rank, you are going to be able to get these additional Pokeballs by crafting and via other means later on. You're going to be able to get the Feather Ball, and then after that you unlock the Great Ball. After that you get the Leaden Ball. After that you get the Wing Ball. The Leaden Ball is an improved version of the Heavy Ball. The Wing Ball is an improved version of the Feather Ball. And then you're going to unlock the Ultra Ball, the Gigaton Ball, which is an improved version of the Leaden Ball, and the Jet Ball, which is an improved version of the Wing Ball. Oh, look at that design. The Jet Ball and the Gigaton Ball are two beautifully looking crafted Pokeballs. Like, look at there in the hot bar. That's the Gigaton Ball. And let me tell you, if you get a back shot on a Pokemon with a Gigaton Ball, the actual weight that the game feels like when you successfully do it, I don't know if it's the exact same as the Heavy Ball, but it feels like it has so much gravity to it. All right, so these worm pull over here, they're not gonna run. I'm gonna throw a berry. Go, go get the berry. Go get the berry guy, go get it. I'm gonna walk right behind him, he's unsuspecting. Oh, so powerful. Let's let's compare that to the heavy ball. Back shot. I guess it's the same, but I don't know. It just feels cooler with the Gigaton ball. As far as crafting these Pokeballs, they all generally require the same sort of items. All of them require a base Apricorn, which you're going to be getting everywhere. The Pokeballs are going to be needing the red tumble stones, the variety of heavy balls are going to be needing the black tumble stones, the variety of feather balls are going to be needing the blue tumble stones, and all of them require increasing amounts of iron chunks. Iron chunks, I, I feel like with your star rank getting higher, iron chunks just drop more often every time that you're farming materials. And also there's various ways for you to just buy specific materials. I'm going to be making a full crafting guide going over, you know, the things that you should buy and things you should not buy. This Buizel over here. Buizels have a very far view distance. I don't know exactly why. Also, they can be a little difficult to, uh, to deal with. So if I throw this feather ball, I actually threw it too low and it bounced off of the earth. Too high and it landed in the water because I have that little bit of a hill there. The feather balls require like real precise aiming and you're probably gonna burn through them quite a bit. This guy's not easy to throw at. Uh, let's go for the middle tier, the wing ball, which has the exact same properties as far as travel distance. And that time I actually managed to, to reach it. So that's like throwing a great ball, but from far away, I feel like. Again, these are not backed up by numbers or anything else, just over 100 hours of experience playing the game. In the beginning of the game, you're gonna be juggling all three balls, you're gonna be finding a balance that works well for them. However, once you're getting into the mid and the late game, the wing balls are gonna be very helpful when trying to catch alpha Pokemon because they have just quite a long range of set of sense. They can see you from very far away. If you're not in grass, you, you are going to be seen. But from right here, there is a chance this wing ball is actually going to cover this distance. So you see how it did that little clock? That means that even though it did make contact with the Pokemon, you're actually outside of the throwing range. Even though the ball is technically the, the right ball for the job, you have to get a little bit closer for the ball to respond. Not exactly too sure why it does that. Also, just to let you know, when you start off the game, you are not going to be able to catch these alpha Pokemon until you level up a little bit. Someone sees me. I don't think it's this guy, though. We got him. Oh, he sees me. So, we did not catch that Pokemon. Now I got this little Shinx to deal with. Shinx, go away. Oh, you, you actively see me, so... I'm not going to be able to throw a ball at you. Dude, I'm, I'm doing a video. Really? Really? You got you got to be like that. Go, oh, cool lava. Good job, cool lava. You're a good boy. Okay, where was I? Back in the grass. Hey there, buddy. So I'm gonna wait for him to turn around. We're gonna go for that back shot because I think the back shot is gonna have a slightly better chance to catch him than if I just throw it at his face. Okay, running out of patience. Let's throw a berry over there so that he gets distracted by the berry and presents his back to me. Thank you. I'm also going to dodge a little bit away. And fantastic, that was able to catch him. 
I think that's going to be the exact same catch rate as if I threw a regular great ball, but that little bit of distance goes a long way. I also plan on releasing a video going over very helpful items for different catching strategies because there's lots of different ways you can play the game and I can't wait for you to experience it. So if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. And for more Pokemon Legends RCS content, I'm Austin John. Until next time, I'll, I'll see you next time. I tried changing the outro and it didn't work.